So my name is Shalisha. Um, I'm 32 years old. I am a student of post-prison education program and also an employee. Um, I am a mother to a 17-year-old son. I am a sister to three brothers, um, one who's struggling with mental health issues now. Um, I am a daughter, a friend, um, and I tell you this because I'm those things because of Ari and the post-prison education program. Um, if it wasn't for Ari and the post-prison education program, I wouldn't be any of those things. Um, I wouldn't be the person that I am today sitting in front of you. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my background. Um, growing up, I grew up in addiction uh, my whole life. Uh, I was raised around money, drugs, and gangs, or what I like to call the game. Um, it was something that was normal for my family. Uh, my mom was a severe alcoholic and very abusive. And with me being the oldest of four kids, I usually took the abuse um, to stop it from happening to my brothers. Um, around the age of three, my mom got with my stepdad and um, the abuse stopped a little bit because he wouldn't allow it. But then she started her addiction with um, a harder drug. She started doing a uh, crack cocaine. And I remember her prostituting um, to get drugs or us being homeless. And I don't remember going to being in one school for a whole year. I remember bouncing from school to school to school and taking care of my brothers because there would be nights my mom wouldn't come home. I didn't know where she was at. Um, I remember sitting up for, she'd be gone for days, calling the hospitals, calling the jails, trying to figure out where my mom was at because I didn't know if she was dead. Um, my stepdad ended up going to prison uh, when I was about eight years old. Um, he went to prison for a couple years for an assault. Um, he stabbed someone that tried to rape my mom. And with my dad being gone, my mom's addiction got worse. But she got introduced to methamphetamines. She started cooking it. She started selling it. She started running around with guns. Um, at that time is when we, me and my brothers kind of got sent off to live with an aunt. And I didn't understand addiction at that time. And I didn't know why my mom didn't want to be with us. And so it was 2000. I remember it was November 2000. Um, I got a phone call that my mom had got arrested. She was being investigated for a murder. And so she sat in the county for a long time. And during that time, I started to get very rebellious. Um, I didn't understand really what was going on. And so I ran away and I turned to the streets for acceptance and approval. Um, I got pregnant at a very young age. I was 15 when I had my son. Um, and so, I was, I lived back with my stepdad. Um, I was going to school. I was being a mom the best that I knew how to, but I didn't know how to because I was a kid myself. Um, but we made it. And uh, my mom had gotten out of prison and she was doing well. And so I decided to move back in with her. And I remember she was working and stuff. And one night I had found a meth pipe in her pocket. And so when she got home, I confronted her about it. And I have, she was abusive, but that night it turned so bad that I didn't know if I was gonna live. I um, hopped out the window and I called the cops. And I remember my mom going to jail and me going to sit, get sent to live with my aunt. And I remember my mom calling from jail, like blaming it on me that she was in jail. And I didn't understand why she couldn't take responsibility for her actions. So she um, got out, I was doing well, I was going to school, um, I was living with my aunt, I was being a mom, I had my son. She got out, the no contact lift order was lifted and I decided to move back in with my mom. Um, this is around the time I was 18 years old. Um, my mom was heavy into doing meth again and she was always locked in her room all the time and I didn't understand why she was never out there with us. And so I got introduced to meth by my mom. Um, I started doing meth with my mom at the age of 18. I thought that it would uh, bring us closer and it didn't push us further apart. Um, I started committing crimes at the age of 18 and like Keith, I too went to prison for the first time at the age of 18. Um, while I was in prison, I did get my GED. Uh, I got released. I went to Spokane because I didn't trust myself going to King County. I didn't want to be around all the old people. 
So I went to <coughs> work release in Spokane, but the day I was released from work release, I went back to Seattle. And um, I stayed clean for a couple months maybe um, and started running with old people. Um, I've been to prison five times now. I've given DOC over 11 years of my freedom. I learned about post-prison education program in 2011. It was my third prison sentence. Um, I had stumbled across the application. Something had something told me to fill it out, you know. So there is a desire in me to want something different, but I didn't really understand it. So I filled it out, sent it in, but I never followed up. Um, I got out, caught new charges, went back to prison for the fourth time. And it was during my fourth sentence, um, I filled out another application to post-prison education program. And someone that I was in prison with um, had came in and she did a resource fair and she was telling me how post-prison education program was changing her life and all the possibilities that were out there, you know? And so you hear about programs that supposedly help people and programs that are there to support you, but when in reality, like they're not there. Um, and so I didn't know if this was a real program or if this was just something that people talked about. And so during that fourth prison sentence, um, I remember I did go to school in there. Um, I did business technology. I graduated with 4.0. Um, but I remember getting called into the counselor's office and they said, we're gonna make a phone call. And I'm like, okay. And so uh, we call my aunt and my aunt tells me that my mom has passed away. Um, it was at that time, I think I wanted, I knew I needed to do something different. Um, and so as soon as I got to work release, I reached out to Ari and I remember coming down there and it, we had a scholarship committee interview. It's Ari, Keith, and Truth. And I really had no idea what this interview was, you know, but they asked me a bunch of questions and, um, you know, I was just honest with them. And then I started coming to the office every Saturday and I'd sit on the couch and I would get on the laptop and I wouldn't really talk to nobody except for Truth. And Truth was, you know, I learned that Keith was my case manager, but Truth was someone that I confided in. You know, he um, believed in me when I couldn't believe in myself. Um, he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. I remember when I would accomplish something, he would be more proud of me than anybody and send emails to everybody in the office, you know? And so it just, that feeling of having someone believe in you is what I got from Truth at Post Prison Education Program. Um, unfortunately, uh, something happened and truth is no longer here and that triggered emotions of my mom dying that I had I had thought that I dealt with and I did it and so I relapsed uh, I went on the run post prison education never turned their back on me um, I have numerous emails from Ari telling me um, hey what's going on are you okay where are you at like we're trying to help you reel it in you know, and him trying to bring Keith in on the emails. You know, I have emails from both of them just trying to reach out to me before I caught new charges because that's what they didn't want. Me being in my addiction, I wasn't ready to um, deal with it. Um, in my mindset, just I was not going back to prison. Um, I was going to either go out shooting and end up dead. Um, I didn't want to spend any more time in prison. And I didn't think that there was a way out. Um, but... I was arrested, no shooting involved, no nothing. Um, I did go to prison for two years. And as soon as I was in my cell and was sober, I wrote a letter to Ari. And then as soon as I got to work release, I reached out to him again. And I remember putting in a pass to come see him. And I thought it was just gonna be like me and Ari talking, but Jenny was there and we sat around the table for about two, three hours. And the whole conversation was, how are we gonna keep Shalisha out of prison? Um, Ari asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up, you know? <laughs> and he said, you know, like, there's a list of everything right here at your disposal. What is it you want to be? You know, you can be anything you want to. So at that time, Ari hired me on at the office answering phones because, like he said, the people who stick around the office are the ones that succeed. And I was able to learn everything about working with students, about giving back, about I was able to be that support that I got from the program, you know? And so post-prison education program is important to me because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for Ari and the people at post-prison education program. I, 
in my addiction, I lost my identity. Um, I lost who I was. I lost what I liked. I lost everything about me, you know? And so coming out, it was hard for me to even know what my favorite color was, or it was hard for me to know what I liked and what I would put up with and what I wouldn't put up with, you know? And um, I had very low self-esteem and confidence. Um, and because of just being in the office and already having so much faith in what I can do or believing that I can do something or, you know, it just helped build my self-esteem back up and it helped me to move forward. Um, I am registered for school. I start September 23rd at Seattle Central Community College. Um, I'll be going to obtain my bachelor, or my associate's degree in social and human services. Um, I'll be starting with $8,000 in scholarships. Um, and I was able to get these scholarships by seeing people before me, um, like Jenny, uh, going to see her get her scholarship just made it, made me see that it was possible. You know, I hear stories about people getting scholarships, you know, but I've never seen anybody that I personally knew that they achieved that, they got that, you know, and so I thought it was just make believe. And so um, I took the time to sit down and write essays and reach out to people and you know, uh, we went out to the Goodwill Training Center and Ari was there and, you know, it just felt so good to sit there and when I was getting my scholarship and to see Ari and my best friend crying and it just, to see people believe in me and to help lift me up when I was too weak to be, to stand by myself has made a difference in my life. Um, I'm a completely different person than I was when I was out there. You know, um, I'm able to show up and be present in my family's life. I'm able to go up to Harborview every single day after work, even though it breaks my heart, but I'm able to be there for my brother. Um, I'm able to be there for my son. I have a driver's license, a car in my name, insurance. Like that might not be nothing to you guys, but like that's huge for me, you know? And so it's just, um, I'm just grateful for a post-prison education program. If this program didn't exist, I don't know what would happen to a lot of people. That's all I have.